Hi, I am the developer of the game Northern Journey, who recently released on Steam. See the link below. For this video series I will make a little level and talk about the process. This is not a tutorial as such, rather it is an overview of the process I use. So I open my default level. This level has the first person characters, the music player system, save load functionality and different menus already in place. So the first thing I usually do is to understand the very basic environment I'm trying to make. Is it mountains, forests, valley, cave? This choice would usually be aided by where the game story needs us to get to next. In this example I want mountain peaks in a forest. Perhaps I even have a vague idea about the concept of the level. This is usually the feeling I want to convey. It could be heights, loneliness, despair, harshness or something else. Now I need to imagine a scene in this level. For this example I imagine coming out of a cave and seeing the tall rock peaks behind the trees. Big reason for this first scene is to identify the first building blocks we need. In this case we need rock faces, trees, some foliage and landscape textures. Let us take the landscape textures first and off we go to our texture folder. I have always brought my camera on all field trips so I have a little archive I can use. GIMP, the free photoshop alternative, will do the editing. I normally do a more careful job editing images but this is just for the example. And for Northern Journey I did not use any normal maps. That is a real time saver. So I import the textures. Then we need to replace the textures with the ones we just made. And here I will give you a good tip. One of the landscape materials is just a black image. This I use for painting darker patches and shadows. Next we need some building blocks. Off we go to Blender. We create a plane. Then the first thing I do is to UV it. We find the texture we want so we can see the result. And there it is on the rock plane. Now we subdivide it and just sculpt the shape. Vertex paint is something I really like. So I will paint the edges black and add some darkness to the surface as well. For a rock I just duplicate a rock face, mirror it and merge it with the original. Now we have a round shape. Recalculate the face normals and it is good. Finally, these objects need to be centered, export the objects in an FBX file. So here are the imported rocks. First create a material from the rock texture. It will be unlit in this example, but multiplied with vertex color. You will shortly see why this is very important. Open the meshes and add the material to them. Also, I don't use shadows, so I will disable it. And we remove the simple collision. Then we need to set the use complex collision as simple. Now the player can collide with all the vertices of the mesh. What we have just created are like lego bricks. So in the scene I imagine we come out of a cave. As you see our lego bricks can be used in any way we need. The round rock is good for hiding edges where the rock faces cannot properly connect. So here we have our cave opening. It already looks quite good but we need some darkness inside the cave and on the rock faces. I will select the rocks I want and then I will paint the darkness directly on it. Vertex color I would really consider an artist tool since it is so fast and predictable. 
not to mention almost free in terms of performance. To blend the cave better, we will also select the black textures in the landscape paint tool and paint black where the rock meets the cave. The next thing I want is water. Let us create a very simple water material. Unreal has a good normal map in the starter content, so let us use that. We need two of them and two panels. They will scroll the textures. We also need the texture coordinates for tiling. So we just need to multiply and add them, and hook the result into the normal. For an easy water we will use a plane. Then apply our water material. For creating the reflections, we will use a box reflection capture. Size it, and there we have our simple reflection. The water ripples are far too big, so we adjust it in the texture coordinates until it looks okay. This is a very easy water material. So we want some foliage. Let us check my foliage texture folder. There are plants I have photographed on different trips. Hopefully I have the ones I need, or else I might need to plan a little hike into nature. The process is very easy. Open the texture in GIMP and select the background. Delete it and you have an image with transparency. Then I collect all foliage pictures that are the same type on a large one and save it as a PNG. We open Blender and create a plane. UV it and select the part of the image you want. Here I just merge two planes in an X. After importing both the texture and the mesh, we create the material. This time we want unlit material with transparency. The texture already has the transparency, so we just plug the alpha into it. It is always nice with moving foliage, and a simple grass wind will do that for us. Try out some values and plug it into the offset. For this example I have also added more foliage I have already made for the game. When we paint it onto the landscape, it starts to look lush and nice. So what is the next thing we miss from our scene? Trees. I make the trees myself. It can be a bit time consuming, but it is fundamentally just a lot of planes of leaves stuck onto a tree log. So I will not build the trees in this video. Instead I will find some trees I have already made. Then the tiresome job of placing trees begin. You could place them as foliage, but I prefer to place them manually. As these trees are low poly and unlit, they are practically free. In my levels I can use many thousands of them. Now let us see the result. Then I will just expand the area a bit. We need a skybox. The skybox is just a plane that is curved with a scrolling texture applied. The next item is the most important for mood and to blend everything. Exponential height fog. I can spend many hours adjusting this. Once you understand it, it is very powerful. It can create depth, distance, hide things you don't want to be shown, blend and create silhouettes. This is usually the single most important thing to get right in my experience. For now, I like this black fog. This is how I start to make a level.